4 a.m. 4.30 in the morning, actually. And Ellie and I are going to Nebraska. This is going to be different for me. Last year was the first time ever out there. And now I'm going out there. It's half work trip and half fun PTO time for me. We're going to go film some new Baronet stuff, um, hang out with some of the guys at Final Draw TV, go hunting with them for the first couple days, and then me and Colin are going to link up by the weekend and then film more for my YouTube channel. I had to split it 50-50 before work time and then PTO. So Ellie and I are packing up late, as always. We're gonna hop in the old Ford and head out, get on the road. All right, we are making a pit stop at the Omaha Shields. Levi needs a tripod for a spotting scope. He ordered one and it didn't come in in time before we left, so we're gonna go into Shields and go snag one and see if we forgot anything else, probably did, and we can snag it up here. So we're gonna run in here quick and we'll be meeting Colin at like 6 or 6.30 in the night to hang a tree stand on one of the properties. Look who it is. Huh? We're back in Nebraska, baby. Yo, Kitmeister. Best place to be, except for it's the desert out here. Yeah, it's uh... Honestly, it's scorched out here. All the crops are dry. The farmers are cutting this corn for silage because it just didn't grow for a crap. And we're exhausted. We we're gonna set up a tree stand today for Colin. Dummy me, I sell the products and I brought the wrong wrench. So we gotta go back to his house and figure this out. But we're out here, we're gonna glass tonight still and tomorrow's also a glassing day. We got a day and a half now before season and we're gonna get after it. We're on them, boys. Two does, let's go, baby. And we got camp set up. You have to take your poison. For survival, you might need it. It's rough out here. Mountain lions and stuff. I know. Public land, Nebraska. Got the gazelle set up, some T4s. I got the Overland edition, it's pretty sick. Popped up in like 60 seconds. Ellie set it up. Ellie told me tonight, what did you tell me about you've never camped before? Are you excited? No. Why not? I don't like being outside. It's disgusting. Good morning. Good morning. It's the 305. Mm -hmm. That'll look good for these deer. All right, we're up. I'm gonna glass and try and find some deer. Keep posting. Hopefully there's some deer out. It's a beautiful morning. Before it's gonna be hotter than hell today. You see him way in the way in the back in the top of the grass there. Dude? Yeah. Yeah, you're like, you're like, yeah, I know. Big boys, big boys. You still standing there? Where? Of course, hot as balls and we get a tornado too. Of course. It's just dropping down. Nice! What do you think, Levi? I can outrun it. <laughs> On foot. <laughs> All right, let's it's go. Actually, super sketchy. Yeah, be careful. Yeah, we're gonna go glass some deer. And they're up on their feet, too. I'm telling you, dude, it's crazy storms, windy. Gosh, I hate this state, but I I kind of like it a little bit. Just a little bit. So, all right, off to find some more public that we can actually hunt.
Well, we put on like 150 miles tonight, driving west and then coming back, glass in private, and hardly any deer, just does. So no idea what to do tomorrow, but we'll see. So late to the party. It's opening morning. <clears throat> We've seen a bunch of white deals already. I'm not gonna shoot a white deal, I don't think. I completely forgot. I still have my freaking test heads on, my test arrow, so I don't even, like I have to sit here and get this stuff ready before I even go out. Well, those does kind of ruined the spot for us, and I just don't feel like walking to the next canyon because it's just gonna be white tails. So, day one, we're still gonna do recon work and drive around, probably head west. So, we're gonna see. Levi's texting me, he said he's only seen a doe in a pond so far. I've seen like nine deer, so whatever. It's Nebraska, baby. Let's go. He got up to where I could just see him kind of on this hill. And I watched him, he put his head down. And the next time I saw him pop back up, his head and nose were going into the corn. But I didn't hear him hop. I didn't see him hop. I didn't hear him take off through the corn. So maybe he just tucked down in there. And, you know, he's probably bedded within 30, 40 yards of us right now. I'm a little farther. The worst thing is, though, is we're not going to be able to hunt this. Just wind is going right at him. had a crazy doe come out with two tags in her ear. Number 13. It's my lucky number too. So we're going to sit here for a little bit and see if anything pops back out of the corn. The sun doesn't look like it's got a lot of Actually there's trees and it's grass in there too but 
for walking in purposes, your wind might be fine where it's not blowing into anything. But when you, like I said, when you get to that fence up there, though, is the issue. You might actually have to sit, like, choose a cornfield and sit in the edge of it. That's what he was saying. Or you're going to have to just lay up tight along the fence and pray to God that nothing's going to do. Back in the field. We went to camp, collected ourselves today. And after what I saw this morning with that buck that I should have got a shot at but didn't, got my rangefinder now. So we are all grouped up. It's basically like strategizing almost a deer drive. Like I dropped Levi off back there, then Jeremy and his brother up the middle, and I'm gonna cover one side. So four guys are covering the entire east line or west line of this property. Let's hope they come out. Sunday morning, Levi packed up and headed out. Uh, he was over it, most of us guys here are over it. So, Ellie and I packed up camp, and our plan is to just stay in a hotel for the night. And Jeremy, his brother, Ellie and I, are going to try and door knock and get some permission. If we can get permission where these deer are, Ellie and I are gonna grind it out and hunt the next two days. If we door knock at a couple places today and we get told no a whole bunch, I think Ellie and I are just gonna pack up and leave tomorrow. Well, we got on private. Guy said, yeah, so we got 1,500 acres to glass and get after it. So us boys and gals are gonna go send one. Porn's dead, Milo's dead. Wind sucks, but we got her. All right, we have our first buck spotted on land that we can hunt. We got permission earlier. It's seven o'clock. There's a bunch of does, a buck, possibly some other bucks, and some cows in this cornfield that's really crappy. Some of the corn is like a foot tall, some of it's four feet tall. Wind is perfect. We're gonna make a stalk.
exhausted to say the least. At least we have a hotel tonight. So, $102 and finally get to sleep in luxury for one night. We got one more morning left, let's go time. We stocked three big bucks uh, and I thought it would be a 300 yard stock and it was a three quarter of a mile stock. We'd walk 100 yards and they wouldn't be any closer. Walk another 100 yards and they wouldn't get any closer. And we got within 80 and a doe picked us out and they went down the hill. So at least we saw deer, had a stock, me and Adam had a blast. We got tomorrow and if not, we'll be back in November. But I'm jacked, we finally saw deer and I just need a shower and a nice warm bed. One buck's moving towards the canyon. Oh, I, th I, I think it was good. I thought I, I put it right where it needed to be and I touched off. I don't know, what do you think? He gave you a... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope it's good. I gotta go check this arrow. Let's go do it. I need to sit here and rewatch that film though and check where, he, check where he was so I can find that arrow. So here's what happened. We're on deer heading that way because we know there's big bucks. Ellie and I are walking over this hill here and I get to the edge and I see how dark, I'm like, it's a cliff. And I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, didn't I say, I was like, there could be a deer bedded right here. And I look down, all of a sudden I heard hop, hop. And I look in a buck and it stood right on that hill. And I ranged him shaky. It was like 73, 53, 55. My pin was at 60 and he was uphill. So I just held a little low, lower third and touched off and he was quartered away decently. And as soon as I shot, I heard twack and he went like this. Oh, you I definitely heard him, that's for sure. Let's go try and find that arrow. Well, Cruz here. Um, I don't know. I just replayed the shot a bunch on my camera. And just the way it looks right now is quartered away, high left shoulder, and then entry out of the neck, which is not a dead deer. So my hopes are kind of low right now, but there's a chance I should have, I, my pin was at 60 and I just, I ranged 73, which I think was behind him. Then there was a little bush in front of him that I thought was 53. So I'm like, okay, he's halfway in between there. So I had my 60 and aimed a tad low, but I think I shot high and I was just, I think it was far forward. I might've came out the neck, guess we'll see.